All right, it's uh, October here in Iowa and I'm getting ready to put the boat away for the winter. I actually just changed the oil and now I'm getting ready to winterize the coolant system and the fuel system. And as you can see, this is a Volvo Penta Gen 5 V8. Uh, apparently the V6, the Gen 5 V6 has the same procedure. So first of all, talking about the coolant system, um, you know, the it does have coolant internal to the block, so I'm not going to drain that. This is just the, the seawater coolant system. And according to the Volvo manual, you just pull this pin, press the plunger, and then all of the seawater just drops down into the bilge. Uh, apparently you're supposed to leave that open for 12 to 15 minutes and, you know, be done. But I, I'm still kind of concerned that, hey, could there, could there be water in the input lines? Could there be water down in the impeller housing that, that could freeze here in the Iowa winter? So for as easy as it is, I'm just going to actually run the pink stuff through the entire coolant system as you would with a, with a typical legacy um, internally cooled uh, boat motor. So I'm um, heading to the back of the boat now. All right, I'm on the back of the boat. Now, I, I didn't video the setup of this, this deal. I uh, don't want to bore you with that. But basically, I bought a boat winterizer kit that allows you to put your antifreeze into, into this jug and then you have two T handles that you can switch from the hose input over to the the boat in, or, or to the antifreeze input. So basically, you quickly you know shut the hose off, open this, and then you flush the entire system with with the antifreeze. And just one other note: when I was changing the oil, the the first time I disconnected here to uh, warm the warm the motor up to change the oil, a bunch of water did come out of there. It came out of the hose and also down here at uh, in, in, on the input vent. So. That's just another reason I'm kind of worried there could be water somewhere in the system. Um, now, maybe when you press the plunger up top, that releases the vacuum and that water does come out. But, I mean, I assume there would still be water in this hose here, which, you know, it's a hose. It should expand when the water freezes. But, you know, would that plastic piece there crack? So, anyhow, just a little extra insurance for as minimal of an investment as, as this here is. All right, moving on to talk about the fuel system. Um, I know there's different philosophies on do you keep your boat full or empty or what do you do over the winter time. I'm of the philosophy that I, I, I filled the boat up today and I did treat it with uh, stable fuel stabilizer. Now I only run non-ethanol fuel so I don't have to worry about water separation and such but but still since the, the fuel is going to be in there for four to six months I, I, I do stabilize it. I filled the tank up to about 90 percent. You know I'm not too worried about expansion as we're going into winter so it's actually in the mid 70s here today, so I, I, I think I'm going to be fine with respect to any type of expansion. All right, the other key thing the Volvo manual states for winterizing the boat is the fuel system. And they suggest you run 50 to 1 mixed gasoline with uh, two cycle oil. Basically, I use my still oil here and I've mixed that in with a in a one gallon gas can that I'm going to hook up remotely on from from the gas tank. Um, you'll, you see I have a little string here, and you'll see what that's for in a minute. Um, now, that that fuel is also stabilized. You know, I have a five-gallon tank of stabilized fuel. I dumped a gallon in there and mixed it in with my, my three ounces of the 50-to-1 mixture. And apparently that lubricator injectors, lubricator cylinder walls, that puts a nice little coat of oil in there to help fight corrosion and such over the winter. All right, I'm going to show you how I'm going to connect to the remote tank. Now, the Volvo manual states that you need a moderate amount of mechanical skill and knowledge to do this, but I think if if you're smart enough to be able to operate a flat blade screwdriver to take that hose clamp off and have enough common sense not to spill your fuel into your bilge, I think you're good to go. You can kind of see why, that, why I have this piece of rope here now. This uh, this is going to keep it from tipping over on me. It also does state to use a, or suggest using a uh, portable marine tank, but I didn't have one of those and I didn't want to go spend 70 or 80 bucks on it for that. So. So what I did do is I went to the auto parts store and I bought a piece of 3 8 inch inside diameter fuel line. Um, you know, I did check the fuel line down here and it's stamped inside diameter of 3 8 so it's the correct size fuel line for at least this boat. You'd, you'd want to double verify on your boat. So what, I, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm just going to take that hose clamp off, slide the hose off, slide this one on. You know, I did have an extra hose clamp, so I mean you could use that hose clamp to put this one on, but I got an extra one and then I'm just going to put the other end down into that jug, and then basically I'll be sucking from that fuel tank instead of my fuel tank right underneath there. So I'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm all set up and ready to go here. Now what the manual states is to start the boat and run it at a fast idle for about five minutes. And of course the purpose of that is, you know, your fuel filter right here is currently full of um, non-treated or non-two cycle mixed fuel. And we wanna make sure we get it 
uh, all the two cycle up and through the motor. And uh, one other key point here is at the end of this engine power cycle is when I also need to do the antifreeze flush. And because if I, if I do one then the other, then it defeats the purpose of the first one. So they have to be done at the exact same time, um, well, or at the end of the cycle. So after the boat runs, I'll probably pull it back down to regular idle, and then I will flush the antifreeze through the system, and uh, then the boat will be uh, ready for its long winter's nap. All right, we're running here now, and as you can see, I do have the, uh, the hatch open just because there might be some gas tubes down there. And I, I also am operating the build blower just to try and keep it safe. And according to the manual, they said, hey, run it at about 1500 RPM. So got my tack set at 15. And of course, I'm at a fast idle. If you don't know how to do that, you just, you press the button here in the middle as you're engaging your uh, your shifter and that'll keep the, that's, That'll keep it from getting put in gear. So basically the prop's not spinning in the back of the boat right now. So I'm gonna let it do this for about uh, you know, five, 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna idle it back down and turn on the antifreeze in the back. And I'll have my wife help me and she'll shut the boat off about the time that tank empties out. All right, the boat's been running about 10 minutes or so. Let me long enough. Looks like about half that gallon's already gone. So I'm gonna switch on the antifreeze and then I have my daughter in the boat will shut it off when I tell fuel line hooked back up and the last thing I want to do is pull the plunger curious to see how much pink stuff actually did get sucked up into here so pull the pin and I guess you push this there it comes so that's going to drain out I think I'm just going to leave this open drive the boat around the block with the drain plug out. Try to get as much of that out of there as I can. And uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, hopefully it didn't create more questions than answers. Bye.